Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our event entitled Beyond Quarantine, How Culture Heals the Planet. I'm Anna Maria Esposito, IULM University, and I would like to greet our guest speakers, André Ruth Chamma, director of the Franco Parenti uh, Theatre in Milan, Maria Fratelli, curator and manager for the municipality of Milan, Bruno Brulon Suarez, professor of museology at the Universidad Federal do Estado do Rio de Janeiro, and Luis Alberto Oliveira, chief curator of the Museum of Tomorrow, Estado do Rio de Janeiro. My colleague Cristina Vannini and I uh, will moderate the roundtable, and we would like to briefly explain you how the event was conceived. And uh, the year 2020 was supposed to be an important year of change and new beginnings. It came with promises of pollution control and sustainable development. And eventually something did happen. As you all know, COVID-19 forced the world to quarantine and we all could see the upside to the global lockdown. That is, mother hurt got a much deserved breath. Owing to the halt in the economic activities and sudden shutdown, our planet started to see positive impacts. And in a move to protect humanity, serious attention is finally paid to health of the planet, along with the health of its inhabitants during the pandemic. So it seems that a new culture is emerging, a regenerative human culture that can lead all of us to new awarenesses, new behaviors, and a new balance within the world. This does give hope for a better tomorrow. And the big question is, is culture the path towards a virtuous relationship between planet and humanity? Around this theme, our guest speakers will develop a debate focused on the comparison between the Brazilian and Italian experience. And uh, moving in the center of the topic, I am happy to end over it and end it over to the first speaker. So, André Chama, considering your experience, how does culture heal the planet? What is exactly the question? How does culture heal the planet in your experience? As director of Teatro Parenti. My experience is how culture can help uh, in a small piece of a city where the city is uh, awful and with the theater and with culture, with people coming, it will change. But the planet, I don't know, it's too much. So may okay. I- Okay, your little piece of planet. The little, Your little pieces of planet. Yes. And Milan. the local theater in a very low, many little pieces of planet does uh, the big change. So during my career, I can, uh, um, I have frequently seen how the theater produces change in individuals, in a society, and overall in the territory that surrounds it. A theater can redefine the geography of living together. It can give new lives. To an area. It has the power to change not just people but also their habits, their way to live in the district and their needs. Cultural activities can generally generating also economic obviously, obviously opportunities that can lead to the birth of new commercial activities. When there is a theater, for example, it's necessary a restaurant where people can go after the show and where actors and the other workers can eat during the rehearsal. A good example is the, you now if you make the photo with the streets uh, about, yes, because there was awful this, uh, the, this Cadolini street uh, in the 24, the theater headquarters in Via Pier Lombardo was under renovation. So we had to relocate the activities to the Teatro Franco Parenti in Cadolini Street. It was very, very poor uh, area 
and with this blue that you can see, very new, and with the light, and we cannot see because it was before the little light. After a lot of little lights come along the the wall, and light make completely different. So the people become very friend, friendly with us. So there was just abandoned warehouse and factories and nothing more before. The theater was located in this complex, making in a place of charm, required a great effort. So we had our Marcello Iazzetti, Betta Gabbioneta, had the task to set, up, to set up the new theater's building. We painted the sky on the walls. This was just the beginning and we created there was the atmosphere inside. It was just very, very warm, very friendly, the theatrical sense of the Teatro Franco Parenti. It just for people that were used to come in, in Via Pier Lombardo to recognize something like uh, the chair was the same, the color was the same. This was uh, really for only one year, two years. So we did a lot of big effort just to, to make uh, some place that were not a theater, of course. In order to embellish the exterior, the great perimeter was, wall was painted, as I show you, and an elegant sign was placed. In the first moment, a lot of people who had the subscription, the abonamenti, to our theater, for the entire year, and until the displacement, there was loyal spectators for the theater, preferred to lose the money. They didn't want to come there. And they said, we will never come again because it was, uh, you know, very bad people around the theater. And uh, here I write something um, just to, we brought culture, entertainment, social aggregation. We offered events, show, workshop for people. And even just to come to have tea, we invented a, a 100 things just to make the people find themselves at home. So it was uh, in the afternoon for uh, all the person. And we did also gymnastics in the morning on the stage for uh, the lady of the houses around. So for us, culture was really a way to live in a place that they were not used to. And after we can have also a philosopher, a writer, high and, and low level. I mean, we put all together. I don't know if there is something else, but uh, now in that place, this was a, just a stage. And yes, only these. We Unfortunately, we didn't thought uh, we in that moment that we would have necessary to have things. Unfortunately, when we live in the present so deeply, we don't never think about when it will be the past. I don't know if I can explain my idea. Now, in that place, we can take off this image. Uh, there is art galleries, a studio of architects. A lot of young people came inside. The dance department of the Pier Lombardo Academy that we did had become a dance school. And now it's called the Dance House, and directed by Susanna Beltrami. And the Dance House called the Cataclo. So now there is also uh, a place uh, where uh, you can choose the model. I mean, all, it, it became completely different after we arrived there. It was just after the simple fact that the theater, such as the Theater Franco Parenti, uh, chose to be there, just they said, why? In fact, in, that stay, in, in this place, the Piccolo Teatro, many, many years before, put the Teatro Quartiere in Piazzale Cuoco. So, uh, Many, many years before, this uh, part was about completely forget uh, after, but they, they perhaps some old person remember when it was uh, not so dull. And now what I can say is that uh, everything is finished, my image finished. Yes. Okay. No, okay. nothing. I said, uh, this is an experience really very concrete. And uh, now when I go there, I am really happy that it happened because we were here, there, faster. I think this was Thank enough. You.
Thank you, Andre. So a beautiful experience and uh, theater as tool to heal a neighbor of Milan. But now we can move on here, Bruno Brulon Suarez. Bruno, can you share with us your opinion, opinion about the topic? Yes, yes. And just like uh, uh, Andre, I'm going to try to uh, work with one example. And for this reason, I would like to share you, with you my presentation. Thank you. Um, just one second. There you go. Can you see this uh, yes, beautiful image? Thank you. Okay, this is just to introduce what I would like to say uh, addressing by addressing this question that you, you very provocatively posed, which I think it's a very necessary question. And I would be uh, speaking, obviously, from the point of view of uh, the Brazilian current context in 2020. Uh, but I would like to first to remind ourselves that in uh, 2012, the UN has considered Brazil an example to the world on sustainable development. As you might remember, the, the 2012 Rio event on sustainability was perceived as, and I quote here the UN, uh, humanity's chance to commit to a transition to a green economy. Um, last year, in 2019, in the General Conference of the International Council of Museums, the Brazilian photographer Sebastião Salgado, um, whose pictures you can see here in this presentation, made a presentation of some of his work denouncing what was at risk in the Brazilian Amazon rainforest. Um, here is another image by him. Now, in 2020, uh, again, Brazil is an international case study but at this time, it's a case study of unsustainable practices and an example of national destruction of the environment in the name of a new conception of development and progress aligned with neoliberalism and the global market. So I would like to argue in this presentation, following Salgado's appeals from last year, that the destruction of the environment is directly connected with the precarity of human life in the Brazilian territory. This is not a surprise statement uh, when we think about the current situation in Brazil and the threats to the environment. Uh, we, are, we are not very surprised because, as we know, uh, the Bolsonaro gov government and the current policies uh, that threatens the environment were already very e expressed very vocally by this president even before he was president. So. Uh, this is something that we we are, we were very much afraid, but now we are having to deal. We having to we are we are dealing with the consequences of this scenario. Uh, for this reason, uh, we have to ask how the country that was an example on sustainability uh, a few years ago, according to the UN, has become the greatest example of a necropolitics in the beginning of the 21st century uh, in this difficult year of 2020. From this point of view of state policies for the preservation of cultural heritage, which is a little bit more of what I'm interested in because I work with museums and cultural heritage, um, I have recently emphasized how the ethno preservation of indigenous culture in Brazil should be directly connected to the preservation of the environment and of human rights. Uh, so that's why I would like to answer your question, Ana Maria, by presenting an example uh, of an object, a pair of objects, uh, indigenous objects uh, in a Brazilian museum that I explored in a recent study uh, with a student of mine, Leandro, Leandro Guedes, uh, with whom we have analyzed the acquisition of these two indigenous Waura masks uh, by the Museu do Índio, the Indian Museum, uh, an ethnographic museum, and very important ethnographic museum in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, these two ritual masks were presented in the, were pr preceded uh, in the Xingu Indigenous Park, a reserve established since 19, 1961 in the state of Mato Grosso, Brazil, and their production depends on natural resources that are sustainable extracted by the indigenous group Waura, currently living in this preserved land. 
Uh, as you can see in, in the map here, uh, the park of Xingu uh, is uh, a demarcated land in Brazil, in the middle of Brazil, where currently lives uh, different indigenous groups, among which uh, the people Trumai, the Ikpeng, the Kamayura, the Kuikuru, the Maitipu, and the Waura. These groups are, moreover, interconnected through a network of specialized trade marriages and intertribal rituals and uh, each of them cultivates its own ethnic identity that is very much connected to this land and as well as their tangible and intangible cultural heritage. So officially uh, this uh, Xingu Park was established uh, in the 60s uh, in the central west region of the country as a natural reserve where the principles of environmental preservation are combined with the preservation of the living populations and their cultures. Uh, the definition of this land had in mind when it was first conceived uh, the protection of a natural inhabitant uh, from which indigenous people extract the means of their subsistence. In 2015, following a curatorial direction, the museologists in the institution, in the Museu do Índio, initiated a commercial transaction with an indigenous association for the production and acquisition of a set of masks, a total of four Wara masks. Uh, and it was usually uh, through a, a market uh, transaction with the associations that contact the craftsmen in the tribe uh, who will say if they can respond to the museum order and they then set a price. So it's actually a market transaction directly with the indigenous, not like it used to be in the colonial past or even in, when anthropologists went to the field. It's a little bit different nowadays. Um, so that's how they acquire these objects and beyond their apparent beauty that we can see here uh, and their huge dimensions because these masks measure around 50 inches to 8 inches of depth, the masks are considered also rare because as ritual objects they can only be produced in a certain period of the year, regularly around June and July. And the season for the manufacture of ritual masks coincides with the period when natural resources are available in the preserved environment, because obviously the indigenous uh, live sustainably in this environment and they, they, they can extract certain resources in, in all the times of the year. Um, so such a difficult production will only increase the value of rarity invested in these objects for the museum to acquire them. As we have observed in this study, and as you can see in these images, the indigenous uh, craftsmen have participated in the museum process and have not only brought the masks, but have brought the knowledge about their production in the Park of Xingu. Uh, but we have also observed that the process of their preservation in the museum is a process extended to the market, to the indigenous village where they were produced, to the environment where the materials were extracted. So there is a whole chain of uh, production that is preserved and that ob obviously will maintain the production and the people who produce them. Thus, uh, their authenticity depends also on the preservation of human life and culture on a, con on a territory that is constantly disputed between indigenous peoples and the nation states, as we know that this, these disputes have become even more uh, um, stressed in this current scenario. So here, uh, just to make my argument more clear, you can see how the preserved land of Xingu, where the Waura and several other indigenous group live, have been untouched by the destruction that is a fact in all the Brazilian territory, which demonstrates how, by preserving indigenous land, we are also preserving the natural environment where they live. So that's uh, pretty much the argument that I want to make in order to respond to that question. And I would say that uh, by maintaining the bonds between the conservation of heritage, the preservation of the environment, and the subsistence of indigenous life is therefore a priority for cultural institutions dealing with life even when preserving collections of material objects. So 
we, we should understand that cultural objects are not detached from their original uh, environment, uh, environment and, and their original uh, location of production and did not detach from the people that produced them. In this sense, sustainability thus should be perceived in an integral way, as a notion that guarantees the preservation of life in all its forms against the predatory policies and the necropolitics that define the Brazilian state in the present time. All forms of preservation should aim the ultimate preservation of human life and the integral existence of all living beings. And that's the message I would like to uh, give by looking at these objects uh, more carefully. Thank you. I think for now, this is what I would have to say. Uh, thank you, Bruno. Thank you really much uh, um, for your impressive presentation and to show us uh, how uh, environment and uh, life of uh, inhabitants of that uh, part of Brazil are so uh, interwined. And, um, but uh, before I go further in this uh, uh, discussion, I would like to uh, give uh, Luis Alberto Oliveira the word. So, Luis Alberto, what is your perspective? Um, hello, uh, I would like to thank you for the opportunity of being here uh, in this very stimulating discussion. I try to share with you some concepts that we've been discussing, debating in you know, the Museum of Tomorrow, uh, the Science Museum in Rio de Janeiro. And the first one, perhaps the most important, is the fact that we live in a very special moment of mankind's history. Uh, uh, Steven Pinker, the neuroscientist, he says that this is the best moment of the history of humanity. The best moment because we have never been healthier, wealthier, more free, and more pacific. Well, when you are in Brazil, especially in Rio, it is less affirmation, it is something that uh, uh, makes, makes you um, feel troubled. But he, he gets together solid evidence that in fact, we live more today uh, we have more resources, uh, more, 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 more artifacts and, and products distributed to, to, uh, for, for us. Uh, all, almost all of the governments uh, in the UN declare themselves as democracies, whatever that means. And if you compare uh, relatively the lethality of, of violence today, it is in fact just a fraction of what it has been in other in other moments, in spite of the fact that this century has never been a day without a war. Anyway, uh, perhaps the most significant aspect of this best moment is pointed out by the French philosopher Michel Serre, when he observes that today, for the first time in history, uh, there are more alphabetized people than not. In fact, almost 70% of mankind today is alphabetized in some language. And perhaps the most important aspect yet is that of this almost 70%, more than half are women. If you recall that the beginning of the 20th century, the number of literate women throughout the world was close to nil. We understand there's a huge psychosocial transformation taking place that enables us to become the necessary bridge between what came before, what came before us, and what will come after us. So this is in fact a, a very special moment from this point of view. But on the other hand, Stephen Hawking, the famous uh, late astrophysicist, he states that this is the most dangerous moment in the history of mankind, because we have never. Uh, 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 made such destruction of, of the basis of our own biological and ecological and cultural existence, and we do not have the means to leave the planet. So this is the best moment and also the most dangerous. Why? Because as Hawking points out, uh, we are changing the composition of the atmosphere, we are changing the rhythms of climate, we are degrading biodiversity in a rate that approaches a sixth greatest uh, great extinction. 
we already have more than 400 deserts in the oceans, mostly due to microplastic pollution. We are erasing the fertile superficial layer of, our, of the soils throughout the world. We are putting down forests, which are the, uh, are the best ways uh, to, to put out uh, carbon from the atmosphere. And we live in a deeply obscenely uh, uh, unequal society. And inequality is an index of failure, of collapse of many other historical societies. When you stretch out the resources of the environment and the inequality within the society is too deep, it's too great, then uh, it, this, this is a, a predictors, factors that predict uh, a possible collapse. So this is the best moment and also the most dangerous moment. Uh, one way of, of synthesizing these ideas is observing that we live in a new cultural, a new civilization moment we call the Anthropocene. The fact that the, the age where our species are becoming aware of the fact that we have become a planetary shaping force, that our actions cover the planet and you will have long range consequences. Uh, there are many debates among the scientists if this is a geological new age. For us in the museum, uh, this is an important question, but for us what matters is the fact that these, all, all these factors are symptoms that we are living in a new civilizational age. So the Anthropocene is a civilizational issue, a new time where we become, come to understand that our actions are shaping the very basis, are, are changing the very basis of our own existence. That is, we are now are in a non-linear trajectory in the way, in the sense that each step that we take changes the possibilities of new, of new further steps. So our actions are Yes, unfortunately, uh, I think that uh, Dr. Luis Oliveira um, lost the connection. So, if it's um, if it's possible um, to, he's coming back. Okay, here we are. We were just losing the last uh, the last sentence. Okay. Uh, so you can go okay. uh, further. Uh, the Anthropocene is a cultural uh, diagnostics that we can speak about our, our civilization. Uh, we are in, in, the, in the sense of Carl Sagan and Nikolai Kardashev, we, we are now a planetary civilization. There are no realms, no, no places in the, in the world where our action is not felt directly or indirectly. So the decisions that we take today will shape the world that we and our sons and our grandsons will live and every other life and of, 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 of living species in the world will feel it also. So this is indeed a, a very special moment. For instance, what we are living now, the, 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 the COVID-19 pandemic, we can think it of a prelude, of a first movement of this anthropocentrical set of changes. We call it in the museum, the Corona scene. This first moment where uh, the globality of our actions uh, are, uh, are shown to us in an unequivocal way by the emergence of a biophysical agent, something of the size of a hair string split in 20,000 parts. This very small being was able to halt the workings of the capitalistic modern, modern civilization and put four billion people in quarantine. So this is a huge transformation, it's a disruption, but the important fact about the corona scene is it, it is that it is a process. The, 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 the COVID started suddenly, but it will stay with us. We will live with it. It's a part of a whole process. Other pandemics are in the horizon. For instance, from the Amazon, from the, from the putting down of the Amazon forest, as Bruno has, has told us. So what is the whole of culture, of cultural institutions, of culture in the, in the broadest sense? Culture essentially 
is we talking to each other. Uh, Luis Alberto, Dr. Uh, Oliveira is uh, again uh, not losing his, uh, his connection. So I can suggest probably to wait a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Um, anyway, uh, I'll proceed, okay? For your presentation. Okay. And so. Uh, are you done? So, yeah. yes, okay. please proceed. Okay, we can proceed. Yes. Okay, me. Thank you. Uh, I th we think the role of culture is to uh, uh, inform people about the conditions of the Anthropocene, the conditions of the planet from now on. So, uh, we have to be able to dialogue with non human periods, with non human scales. The, the most, important, most important fact, perhaps, is the change that you have to make uh, on our presence here on the planet. Uh, up to now, we have been expanding in space. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the aim of capitalism is certainly to surround all the planet and convert all of us into consumers, from citizens to consumers. It's done that. It, it won. And so now uh, our activities wrap around all the all the planet but our problem now is not to expand in space it to extend our activities in time is not to be progressive but to be sustainable so this is a change in the very core of the the drive that had been that has been organizing our societies from two centuries from now which is capitalism so at the very core of, 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 of this uh, civilizational project, we have to change. So culture is the way that we talk to each other, is the way that we talk to everything else, to other beings. Uh, a, a science is a way that we can talk with the stars, we can talk with the virus, we can talk with molecules, with these this strange non-entities. And by this dialogue, they become human and we become different to ourselves, we change ourselves. So we can remind, as Bruno told, uh, the, the ancient wisdom of original peoples, when they say the mountain is an ancestor, the river is a relative, uh, the animals are brothers, because we speak with them and they speak with us. We need to, culture is the means of speaking with this non-humanity, Something is going wrong with the connection of uh, Dr. Oliveira, and uh, probably I suggest to wait a little bit. Okay. Uh, so uh, to to end it, uh, I I would like to say that culture must cultural institutions today. Make, must make people aware of the fact that today is the place where we build tomorrow. There is not just one path for tomorrow. There are many paths for tomorrow, for many tomorrows open each day. And today is the place of action, is the place where we build this new path for new tomorrows. We have the means to produce, to make the possible future becomes a desirable future. We already have this means. This is the 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 the, the, uh, the, 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 the asset that we have, and so culture now uh, we must recognize it as the way of reconciling ourselves with ourselves and with uh, nature. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Luis Alberto, to reminding us that uh, we are living in a momentous time and that today is the day to act. Now I give the floor to Maria Fratelli. And please, uh, Maria, what is your opinion about the topic of this uh, meeting? The ping pong was uh, uh, how uh, although we have uh, listened uh, 
And uh, also what I want to share with you um, could be, uh, became real, could uh, um, are able to, and uh, capable to changing uh, dystopia in uh, utopia. Um, I think this is possible, it's not uh, demagogy or it's not uh, word exercise. Uh, because uh, um, this uh, uh, is the result of uh, a daily determinate uh, work and, and experience in a museum and in uh, archive files. Um, social presences uh, vect, reflect uh, our belief. Concrete uh, example that. Uh, uh, steam from daily work, uh, project storytelling, and um, all our efforts attempt. From everyday common uh, lives uh, without a receipt, uh, but with one single principle live the world better than found. Uh, why can museum and archive catalyze? catalyze uh, of possibilities, uh, they, because uh, they Patrimony. contain an historic patrimony. You, you can see the, the slide uh, in themselves um, and the experiences that uh, one's questions reveal our current stage as an example. What does Casva contain? It contain exactly all the models, prototype, uh, admin, uh, act, uh, photographies, photographies, uh, letter that um, architects, uh, cabinets have peeled up during the years of that uh, show how Milan has became the nowadays town with its ambitions, a desire, a disappointment, opposite strength and uh, defeats. Archives are everlasting source of information that uh, once studied had to awareness and knowledge. Archives, you can see, are a repository of uh, architects' primordial, primordial idea um, the mutation, uh, all the tests, uh, all the reaction, all the uh, researches, architectural relief, uh, measurement, uh, customers' uh, needs and um, desired, won and lost the project, grid, yes, uh, even in our time, uh, we conserve, still uh, we have the and um, it is a gift, archive is a gift of the community. It memorized the decision adopted, the implemented action, and all the ideas will not persist. And the project is still on paper also. Therefore, it's build and safeguard individual and collective memory. Because archives are, are not about things. You, 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 you can see a, a lot of objects uh, um, and um, photograph and uh, project, but archive is not also about that. Um, archive is about communities, contain situation, uh, speak about people that are indissolubly connected to them, to objects. Archives help to better understand uh, our city. We, are, we live in Milano, and uh, in this, uh, my contribute, I try to uh, um, tell you about uh, very close uh, places. Place. Um, um, archives conserve current modern trait, but give back value in an historical perspective, so to boost its future transformation. 
they also contribute to a more responsible society, able to manage his future with knowledge and awareness for future generation. Success assesses indeed a guarantee of fairness and democracy. Kasbah Rakai's treasure all the instrument to understand the urban reality, how it, it transformed it as uh, we wanted, even when we are unaware of our role in the overall town project, because we have a role every time, even when we don't know. And that's the point. Archive has to reveal their complexity in a, a simple and affordable way. So uh, to involve youth, youth, citizen, and even kind, kids, sorry, with uh, an um, orchestra of interest, uh, with uh, shows, uh, texts, uh, fairy tales, uh, meeting, uh, games, uh, tour, digital solution, democratically available, uh, available to everyone. This is very important, democratically available to everyone. Public, therefore, will be able to understand, to appreciate, to die in and safeguard what need to protect about a specific area or a block or possible, possible improvement to be adopted in a sustainable way. Without pay attention, without erasing aspect that will therefore be was net or even undermine its positive aspect. I said you archive uh, um, help to recognize uh, uh, where needs and beauty lie with consciousness and the ability to, to recognize where they are. They are instruments to protection and both for certain development. They create a relation while before acting, they listen and detect needs and fault, avidity and prejudice. Archived should provide value to contemporary culture and crack dissatisfaction and all the violence that came after as a result of segregation, pursuit of unreachable myths and injustice, true or perceived. All that, all this is just the result of fear uh, and ignorance. An archive must be open, must gather and welcome students as well as elderly people in a pleasant place, place in a town where public and free areas for aggregation are more and more lacking. It must be inclusive, uh, spark curiosity, and interested, but sharing its know-how through good activities, such, uh, I tell you, show, conference, cine forum, uh, seminars, games, uh, to in the area. Uh, the goal uh, is uh, to pervade the town with its billboards, with uh, public exhibition uh, uh, in the street with billboards, uh, while rethinking and qualifying abandoned areas and overseeing the territory with culture. Archive is not a coffet to maintain closed. On the opposite, they are catalyzed of positive energy, energies, constructive criticism and consequent proposal and action. 
Nowadays, Kasva is under progress and still since its origination is a shared project, its value stand not in uh, increasing real estate commercial value. Uh, it's not uh, our intention staying in place to increasing the uh, value of the commercial building in that area. But uh, we want to um, uh, put in value our ability to involve citizens in the area and attract people from the outside so to become a new center of interest and not suburb. Uh, a cultural uh, museum and archive transform a suburb in a new center. A polycentric towns, I uh, agree with the other uh, colleagues that who speak before me, um, a polycentric town is that where all services are walking distance. Now, uh, new urban, urban agglomerates in um, cosmopolitan cities uh, will make it possible to survive to COVID-19, but also to other possible pandemic waves. It's not the last. Culture should learn from contagio. Yes, should spread through contact. How? Archives, museum are a place of contact. Contact with touch, with respect, and with a delicate attention while allowing approaches meeting in a considerate so to transfer transfer positive energy because our clive include uh, both the physical and uh, uh, the physical of things as well as the memory of gesture that qualify us as a social living being in a relation system. We are complex but extraordinary living being, forced of a natural part of it. All thought, we have uh, lost our sensitive dimension, even in a dematerialized environment that lead us to a dystopia stemming from a fracture between nature and human. Is not, I'm not the first who tell this. Contatto then, in Italian uh, uh, word, means contatto, with touch. Is indeed Casa della Memoria's program organized for Christmas time. Uh, and we will have uh, the presence of music, meeting with personalities, as well as tale of human library, kids, uh, storytelling, theater. Uh, the social nourishment is important as much as food or water, since culture is the basis of social life. But we'll meet uh, on the web, but also we realize an exhibition dedicated to the nature knowledge as a unique shared know-how containing the paradigm of world balance. To visualize our concept, if you um, run um, with a video, now we can share the new places when we, um, are, uh, we we're building um, the new archive, but in, if we arrive at the end of this presentation, you can see which is our concept. 
and what we want to realize uh, in uh, this uh, exhibition uh, uh, is in uh, and uh, prepare for uh, Christmas even. We want to dedicate to the nature knowledge as a unique shared know-how containing this paradigm of uh, world balancing. The visual of our concept to visualize our complex, our um, concept, we use it to obsolete uh, Tarkani Encyclopedia, the compendium of uh, 20th century knowledge. The artist, uh, we choose an artist uh, um, uh, that is also a shipper and a farmer made uh, these volume, volumes available to 28 beans families, one of each volume. volume. Bees uh, have uh, used their knowledge in a different way, either by ignoring or by including the books. This is a very uh, cyclic metaphor of our uh, uh, conceit uh, about uh, in Italian uh, from the Greek term uh, is uh, hubris. In English could be arrogance, violence. Uh, is uh, a, a worst mood to uh, share our knowledge that has no value without uh, respecting nature, without harmonia with the planet, our culture fades. Um, if you um, pass uh, this imagine about uh, some uh, uh, different uh, possibility to uh, know our cities, uh, uh, one, uh, we have uh, desired it and have, we have uh, realized it is not the same city in some time. And we arrive at the end, you can see this uh, experience uh, with, uh, with beans. And um, I want to leave you uh, not also with uh, um, with a project uh, or uh, with uh, a, a worse uh, um, dystopia system, but uh, with a utopia uh, thesis. Uh, if you know in a very famous uh, Italian book, Il Nome della Rosa, uh, Umberto Toeco, um, should warn us uh, about the imminent apocalypse generated by the, the merge of ignorance and conceit. But uh, I don't uh, hope that is uh, the right way. Like uh, my colleague, I think uh, that we are in uh, time of opportunities, in time with contact, with contact to transform places and relationships. Because harmony with the universe, along with positive minded culture, is our everlasting future. Uh, Every time we generate uh, a change in our existence, in our existence, um, every change happens because we feel in emotion. We can see now the experience between the match between the bees and the books. And um, is the emotion that shakes that uh, awkwardness that case a physical yoga 
and um, better force us uh, to ask uh, new questions and to try in with uh, in in with uh, um, meetings to respond to this uh, uh, question how can culture restore our planet and i think that you um, can show please the last uh, image in from Enzo Mari is the last archive that we have uh, um, taken uh, this uh, a few months uh, in our collection. You can uh, uh, listen a very important uh, uh, phrase, a very important uh, sentence. When they ask me who is the best designer I know, I always respond that the best designer who uh, he plains trees, uh, like John Jono in uh, The Man Who Plains uh, Trees. Uh, Thank you, Maria. Thank you so much for your, for your presentation. And um, we we can uh, understand from your words that uh, uh, archives uh, um, helps to uh, build a sense of a place and make people who live there uh, proud of their heritage. And also to you have remind us that, uh, again, that the environment and the people are strictly connected. But now it's time to to go on and the point of view of Maria Fratelli bring us to the end of the fifth round of the discussion and I give the floor to Cristina for the second round aimed at deepening the matter further. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, the presentation that you gave, uh, uh, very inspiring. I had a set of questions already prepared, but uh, by the discussion, I, I thought that uh, I've got to be a little bit more, um, you know, in, impromptu. So from my point of view, listening to you, I, I think that uh, nowadays, uh, a, a, an honest and not biased uh, discussion and critics uh, on the application of capitalism and globalization is uh, important, is due, absolutely due. But which are the means that uh, cultural organizations have to carry on this uh, um, these improvement, uh, this change of model, in economical and uh, sustainable sustainable terms. If some <laughs> maybe um, because I I heard uh, about the fact that uh, museums and research can help in uh, preserving heritage and environment. Um, of course, uh, as uh, uh, Mrs. Um, Shama said, uh, uh, there are some uh, uh, partnership that can be carried on with many different uh, partners. Uh, also, as Bruno said, uh, to create, uh, to, to take care of a chain of production, which is not only uh, connected to the production of heritage, but also to the commercial commercialization. And so I think, and then Luis Alberto said, uh, of course, uh, that uh, in these times of crisis, uh, the corona scenes, uh, um, the, the globalization is a big player. And uh, there are very uh, difficult uh, um, aspect uh, connected to inequality. So from, from your point of view, have you experimented uh, some ways uh, in which your institution, Maria, for instance, or André, the theater, or uh, Louise, your museum, 
can be active in uh, in changing uh, the model in which uh, economy and globalization can go on. A small thing, everybody can change around himself, not uh, there is no change, important change that can be done once. Everybody does little, little change. Uh, so I don't <laughs> succeed to answer as before. I mean, if everybody uh, think that we do all we can with the uh, uh, energy, with uh, looking at the future, with the uh, new eyes, we can change something, but we can't, we change around us. Right. Um, this is, I hope to do it every day. Uh, a theater is this, is uh, the same text. And uh, you read uh, one text of Shakespeare, of Chekhov, you can read it today in this atmosphere and you will put it in on stage and it will be completely different because uh, you have new eyes. So the, the thing, the important thing and is always to have new eyes uh, every day. So this situation obliges you to have new eyes. But uh, even if there is not that situation, you have you need to to look in another way. Uh, to, especially because uh, for me, for instance, to speak without knowing who is listening is just I make that make me mad. You know, for me, it's very very difficult situation. It's because I like Anna Maria Esposito. I don't know why I'm here. Because really, you can't understand how it's difficult for me. Because I don't know with to whom I am speaking, who is listening, so I don't know what the, the language I have to use, I don't know what interest, who, who is listening, young people, students, people has nothing to do, uh, uh, architect, I saw a fantastic photo, because Maria Fratelli had a fantastic, uh, so uh, I had no photo, for instance, uh, I am happy that I turned my computer so you can see my office because it's full of colors. Um, so this I can show. I can show my my way to be, not to act, uh, not to represent. So we are what we are, and uh, in that moment we have to put out uh, from outside, from from our, ourselves, the maximum you have to put. You know, we cannot be quiet. I mean, and it's a very difficult way to be not quite uh, so, so close. So the energy is much more, much more, because when you close something, it makes, so this I can say, but everybody can tell it, even if you are changing the, the city, you are changing the, the country, you are changing the Europe, in, in that moment, we don't know what's happening with China. I, I cannot mean... I am thinking about China. I think it's impossible. I'm mad. I have to uh, to think about uh, via Vasari and uh, via Pier Lombardo, via Botta. Uh, uh, this is, and if I do it like this, I can change something. If I think I am, I am much more. I, I do nothing. I am a disaster. So I don't know if I. If, so that's if a, I that's a, a, absolutely a, a very good. Uh, reply from my point but i would like to know like, also the the point of the other speakers because as uh, the, the, the the as it was uh, brought um in the conversation there are two levels you know the the, the individual level on which every one of us uh, people of culture has to work and uh, the, the the global uh, the, the global level uh, to which uh, uh, Luis Alberto was hinting. But what do you think, uh, Luis Alberto, uh, about uh, these two levels of operation? I think that Andrea is completely right in the sense that you have to ground your institution on its historical roots. Uh, you cannot put something completely alien in a place and expect that your neighborhood, that the people, the people that will inhabit your equi equipment, uh, that they feel comfortable. So you have to to set it in, uh, understand its history, and make the institution part of this history. So you have to start local. 
For instance, in the museum, during the construction of the building, we invited the neighborhood, the, 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 our, our neighbors, to make visits so they can understand what was this that spaceship that was going to be put in, this, in, 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 in the shore. And today, of the 30,000 neighbors in the four communities in the hills surrounding the, the place where the museum is, 4,500 are members of the museum. And the most accomplished fact that I lived as a curator was when a, a, a kid grabbed the hand of another kid and, tell him, and told him, look, I will show you my museum. So uh, I, cannot, I cannot think of, of, of a better reward than that. Yes. On the other okay. hand, uh, equipment such as a, a science museum, we have to have an educational role, which is absolutely essential. So this continuity of education, not in, 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 the, in the scholar sense, but in the sense that people that receive information, they can change their ways, they can change their mindsets, and they, they, they can take action. For instance, 87% of the visitors of the museum say that they were moved by what they experienced there. And we have now a measure of 37% of them actually took action in some of the institutions uh, acknowledged by the museum, suggested by the museum. You want to protect the Guanabara Bay, you, you look for some institution. You want to fight racism, you want to protect the forests. So uh, people actually took action. You see? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, thank you. And uh, what uh, was uh, also um, striking me is the fact that uh, history, the term history, was, uh, um, was uh, sub... sub um, uh, was in sorry, <laughs> was included in all the speeches, but actually the, 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 the main terms was uh, present, contemporaneity, and future. So do we think that uh, culture must, uh, uh, of course, keep on keep relying on, relying on uh, the history but uh, and uh, on its historical roots, as we were saying before, but uh, the main aim of culture at the moment uh, is contemporaneity and uh, future. Uh, and a little bit less preservation, although, I mean, uh, although the preservation is uh, completely for museums, archives, and uh, other things, uh, something that uh, must be done, but the main point has to be switched a little bit farther to contemporaneity and future. Bruno, what do you think about that? Because you were the most involved with the preservation of the heritage. Yes, thank you, Christina. I think both your questions are very good. I, I'm going to try to address both of them because I think the role of cultural institutions has everything to do with um, how we want to construct a new future based on acknowledging uh, the past and the present. Uh, for me, uh, like uh, Luis Alberto was just saying, I think museums have a very important role in changing how societies perceive uh, history and perceive the present. And I, I like to think of museums as uh, important showcases, uh, of visual institutions, visual in the sense that they can raise different ways to look at reality, at social reality, at environmental reality. And so I think answering to your first question first, I think um, cultural institutions, of course, like uh, Andrea says, are not going to change everything uh, at once. But one thing that they, these institutions can do is try to raise a consciousness about the present and about the past, especially in a time 
where we live with negationism and the denial of history and the denial of science. I think that's the moment when these institutions are more important. For instance, here in Brazil right now, uh, as the Amazon continues to be destroyed um, and the Pantanal forest is being illegally burned, also the state of Amapá is deprived from power and from basic resources. I think those are things that the media sometimes is not showing, and those are things that our government is definitely not uh, making visible. So cultural institutions should make visible these things, should be discussing uh, the destruction of the environment, for instance, so that we can think of different ways to preserve in the future. We have to look at the problems that we have right now in the present. Um, and that's why I think mu museums are very important because those are inst not only visual institutions, but they are institutions who, who deal directly with the way societies relate to past, present and future. Um, the institutions who operate in our very sense of time uh, in society and share time. So I, I honestly think that uh, the creation of consciousness in the way that Luis Alberto was saying about education, I understand education as a way to raise consciousness about our place in time and our place in history. Okay, well, uh, yes, thank you, Bruno. And the other, the other matter that I just wanted to explore with you was the fact uh, uh, connected to ed education. And because uh, from my point of view and listening to all your projects, it seems that uh, um, the relationship between the leading, the main culture and the sub culture or less uh, uh, leading culture is uh, is based on a relationship of respect of course of dialogue of interaction but that uh, there is a, a huge need of educating each other maybe in uh, in um, dealing with uh, different kind of cultures and uh, of course uh, as uh, louise said this is not a place of uh, now it's not uh, a matter of space but time of okay i agree with you completely but sometimes in order to educate we've got to get into the space again and so we've got to try to avoid these uh, uh, cross these borders uh, between uh, um, center cities and uh, rural areas or natural areas or mm, suburban areas. And so uh, how can you see that culture can go in this direction, educating the, the communities which are less close to uh, educational um, centers? Maria, please. Um, the question is um, important. Relationship is uh, the reason why something could happen and uh, the reason why world uh, will be better in uh, next time. What's uh, the meaning of an archive in a suburb? Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I tell you, uh, archive is a catalyst of uh, opportunities. And uh, I'm sure that culture is transformation. I tell you, uh, is uh, contact. Uh, that means uh, with tact, uh, with feel. And uh, um, for me, two point is very important and remarkable to share. Uh, culture, you, do you, you spoke about history. History like culture um, um, improve us, tell us that uh, there isn't uh, only in, uh, one, one right perspective uh, to see things. Uh, culture um, is uh, a life attitude 
but an attitude to transformation, to uh, perennial uh, research. Uh, research. Um, we um, have to understand that uh, there isn't uh, one true and uh, we can't be um, imposed one culture even another because uh, time pass away and uh, our uh, um, feeling change very much but don't change the reason why we are in this planet and why our four today our five six people are here to uh, try to uh, speak uh, one with other um, because uh, um, um, I want to to share you, with you um, a funny but a very um, not funny but very heavy um, phrases uh, um, that I saw last month in a theater in Milano. Paolo Rossi is a comedian, is a ironic uh, um, comedian, said, uh, all thought man is not immortal, he can be eternal. Then the only way to be eternal, to will be eternal, is through culture. And uh, I'm uh, appreciate that this phrase um, arrive from uh, a comedian because uh, they um, spoke about a, a job uh, like about a theater and uh, i think that the 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 seems another uh, the, the last um, uh, thought that culture is uh, uh, the capacity to be uh, to to joking uh, to have uh, irony uh, with oneself because uh, if we stay in this uh, uh, dimension we respect uh, attitude toward others and of course uh, we have to um, forgot uh, greed because greed uh, chokes uh, every other reason of life Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. And Christina, do you want to say something, remarks at the end, or I go? Oh, it's your turn. You are the host. So. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. So we have listened uh, to some interesting discussion. And what emerged uh, is that culture is able to change people's behavior, and that education and respect, the core concept from which we started this meeting, are really important for healing the planet and also the neighborhood, mm -hmm. obviously. <laughs> and uh, furthermore, we have listened that it is impossible to separate uh, a human being from nature and that preserving environment uh, is about preserving human life because they are intertwined. And that brings us at the end of our meeting. I would like to thank you all of you uh, for attending this event. And in particular, a huge thank to my colleague, Cristina Vannini, and to our special guests, Andrea Chamma, Maria Fratelli, Bruno Rulon Soares, and Luis Alberto Oliveira, for dedicating their time to us and from bringing up so many interesting points to consider. So I think we have been given a lot of food for thoughts. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much to everyone. Goodbye. See you soon. See you soon.